general relativity step by step. Um, after a huge amount of work, I'd identified the Laplacian of the gravitational potential, uh, the Newtonian physics uh, law, the Newtonian gravitational law, with a single term of the Ricci tensor, uh, the zero zero term of the Ricci tensor. So now I'm getting somewhere, and now I can actually use this to identify. Well, let's go back to the, the field equation where I wrote it down. Here we are. You'll remember I wrote down the field equations in different forms, but it was always subject to the uncertainty in k. I've got this k here, and I don't know what that k is. And this screencast, I'm going to find out what that k is, and I can write down the field equations um, in their final form. Well, let me just write down those equations again. We've got r, let me just pinch in a little bit. We've got r alpha beta equals cosmological constant times metric tensor plus k, and of course we don't know what that k is there, we're going to find that out uh, today, times stress energy tensor minus fundamental tensor times t, where t was the stress energy scalar. Uh, you'll notice this has got two upstairs indices, and we've identified the right-hand side of this equation with two downstairs indices. So I need to find, so I need r0, 0. And what does that equal? Well, I'll just write in the skeleton, r zero zero and that's going to no this is wrong i was going to put a zero and an alpha there and a zero and a beta there but that that's incorrect that that's not right uh, that's well you see you've got an alpha and a beta free that that's just wrong we should i'll write the skeleton in first what i'm trying to do is to sum over alpha and beta and i want to leave the zero zero index free on this side so i'll sum alpha there and I'll sum over beta there. And of course, that's summed over alpha and beta. And of course, when I've written it in this form, I may as well consider eta. Uh, sorry, not g. I may as well consider, it, consider the fundamental tensor in flat space, because I can just transform to a local inertial frame. And of course, eta is just equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, because I'm summing over alpha and beta, I only need to consider alpha equals zero and beta equals zero because that's the only non-diagonal, uh, sorry, that's the only non-zero term in this row and this column, uh, being symmetrical. So that's r zero zero equals this. So r zero zero equals uh, minus one from here times minus one from there again with this one times r, and then alpha equals beta equals zero. So that tells me that, the, to this level of approximation at least, the covariant 0, 0 and contravariant 0, 0 indices are the same for the Ricci tensor. This is the Ricci tensor here. OK, so where do I go with this? Well, um, I'll just write down my equation again. I've got the Laplacian equals, and on the one side, we've got it's equal to uh, where did I write it down? This thing here, r0, 0 on the bottom index, which equals r0, 0 on the top index. But we can also, this, this way is using Einsteinian. But this way is using Newton. And we know from classical physics it's equal to 4 pi rho g, where g equals, I think it's 6.671 times 10 to the minus 11. Uh, in SI units. Right, so where do I go with that? Well, I just need to go back to the field equations, which are up here, and just write out the zero, zero components of the field equations. And this will allow me to pin down uh, the K here. So let's just write that down again. We've got R... Uh, well, I may as well just extract the zero, zero component. Zero, zero equals gravitational, sorry, the cosmological constant times g zero zero. See, all I'm doing is taking my equations and substituting alpha equals beta equals zero in this one, simply because I know the r zero zero term. And I can evaluate the right-hand side as well. Plus, plus k times t zero zero minus a half g zero zero times the stress energy scalar pinch in a little bit, and that equals 4 pi rho times g. 
um, about half the textbooks will set big G equal to 1. They will choose units in the same way that you can choose units in which the speed of light is equal to 1. You can choose units in which G equals 1 as well. But I won't do that here. I want to leave, I want to leave big G in this. So 4 pi rho G equals, and of course the, the tensor I'm going to choose is I'm going to choose the flat space tensor minus one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 one. So it's equal to minus cosmological constant plus k times, and I'm going to choose dust. In which case my metric tensor, sorry, my stress energy tensor is rho zero zero zero. It's just got a single non-zero term in the in the top left corner. So that's rho minus a half times g0,0. Zero, zero. Uh, and if I've chosen flat space, that's going to be a minus 1 there. Times t, which is, uh, let me just get this right. That's t equals t alpha beta times g alpha beta summed over alpha and beta. Alpha equals beta equals 0 is the only term that makes any sense. So t equals minus rho. So we've got minus a half G zero zero, which is the top left component of my matrix there. Not really a matrix, but I'll write it in matrix form. And that's this stress energy scalar there. We have four pi G equals minus cosmological constant plus K rho into one. And we've got minus, minus, we've got th three minuses there. So it's minus, it's an odd number, so it's minus a half. Fantastic. So that equals minus uh, plus a half k rho. 4 pi g. Not quite there yet. I'm going to neglect the cosmological constant. Um, the cosmological constant only affects dynamics at the very, very largest scales. And I'm quite interested here in white dwarfs and black holes and galactic motions and stuff, in which, uh, on length scales, l length and time scales in which the cosmological constant may be, may be ignored. So I'm going to neglect the cosmological constant. I'm just going to set it equal to zero for the purposes of, of uh, exposition. And that finally gives me that k equals 8 pi g absolutely fantastic i've finally pinned it down you'll remember that i've been leaving this k open for oh a dozen 15 i think it is screencasts it's taken a lot of work to pin down what this g is and we've needed to use lots of rather clever and quite delicate uh, approximations um from the, the the full Einstein field equations down to the the Newtonian limit, we've needed to use quite delicate approximations, and we've needed to do quite a lot of tensor calculus and tensor work in order to get to this stage. But we finally got it. So that means that I can go back to my field equations, and I can write them in. Where are we here? But without the k, I can substitute k equals eight pi g. So I can finally write out the Einstein field equations in their full form. We've got the Ricci tensor with two upstairs indices, minus a half times the metric tensor, again with two upstairs indices, multiplied by the Ricci scalar, plus the cosmological constant times g mu nu equals, and instead of k, I can write down 8 pi g times the stress energy tensor, again, with two upstairs indices. And there we have the Einstein field equations. And I'm going to spend quite a long time talking about them and finding solutions to them in the special uh, cases. But there they are. Aren't they beautiful? The Einstein field equations. I'm going to stop there. Stop.